to a lot at stake today um, in the appeals court arguments. Well, in Suquamish, we have a wild run of uh, chum salmon that has supported our people for thousands of years. It's under threat by um, two remaining culverts, one of those being a state uh, Department of Transportation culvert. Um, and so we're, in, we're hopeful that the court will um, get the uh, state to uh, commit to a, uh, a more aggressive schedule um, for solving some of these challenges to face us and other tribes in the, in the region. Really, we need to reverse 100 years of destruction, so uh, we need to start yesterday on getting these uh, culverts fixed and other habitat issues taken care of for the benefit of everybody in the state. Well, I believe that the fact that we haven't been able to sustainably fish um, over time, consistently fish over time, um, has affected our, um, our culture and has threatened our culture um, by the fact that our um, a younger generation is not have the same opportunities that maybe past generations have had to fish together as families and to be able to contribute to the um, cultural strength of their communities by providing for um, ceremonies, funerals, weddings, and uh, for uh, family consumption, and also be able to support a family um, at practicing their traditional way of life. Well, I believe that it was relatively absurd that the state would bring forward a an argument that the treaty wouldn't have protected the fish from destruction. And uh, we would believe that uh, the treaty signers and the treaty negotiators for the United States all had a pretty strong understanding that, um, that the salmon and wildlife and hunting and all those things that were um, reserved for the tribes after signing away their land um, needed to be sustained in order for them to have value and for, in order for the treaty to be negotiated in good faith. So the tribes believed that the salmon would be sustained. It's frustrating to see that the, the delays in the budget um, and in the um, um, planning for uh, uh, replacing the culverts, just because of the fact that the salmon runs continue to have uh, a lot of threats and this is one of the biggest threats to them. Courts seem to have an open mind and we're hoping that they'll rule um, in the favor of the tribes in this case. We've worked with the state of Washington for, for, for many, many years to protect this treaty resources, um, our uh, fishery resources, for all the people of the state of Washington. Um, you know, Puget Sound is known for its fishing and, um, and not only the culture side, the tribal side of things, but uh, the sports fishermen and the commercial fishermen out there. Um, we brought this case not just for ourselves, but for the commercial fishermen and the sports fishermen that are out there. And it's a law, one of the oldest laws in the state's books right now of, of uh, not blocking fish passage. For us, uh, it's not about the, the money type issue, it's doing the right thing. Um, they've, and I don't understand where they're coming from because they were going on a pretty good stretch there of fixing uh, culverts on a regular basis. But as soon as we started putting pressure on them, uh, that started to decrease pretty drastically. It is obviously not a priority for them because they, they said in there they don't believe they, they have, um, or that they could make the decision that they could just wipe out all the fish and that the, the tribes or anybody else has a say in that. Uh, and that'd be a shame that, you know, future generations only sees the pictures in a history book um, of people being able to go out there and catch fish. Or they have to go down to the uh, Seattle Aquarium to see uh, a farm-raised salmon that says, this kind of looks like a fish that used to swim here freely.